In this 10th episode of the Exploring Appalachia series, I travel into the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains to visit a revitalized 1930s trout hatchery. If you YouTube like how to start a trout hatchery, there's literally nothing online. My name's Ty Walker. I'm with Smoking Chimneys. Uh, we're here in Newcastle, Virginia, where we have our trout hatchery. Uh, we also do pasture pork, and um, my wife has a raw milk herd share. Uh, we've really focused on the trout here in the past uh, probably two years. It was really a vision of ours when we first came here to really get this 1930s trout hatchery back up and running. So yeah, I got a phone call from a friend who was like, Ty, there's a trout hatchery in Newcastle. You should come check it out. So I came up here with him and we walked around, and, but none of the water was on. So I was like, I don't know if this is a trout hatchery or not. And um, he's like, well, it's a trout hatchery. It used to be X, Y, Z. Goes, hey, bush light. <laughs> Goes down like a cool mountain stream. <laughs> Have you ever seen that commercial? And I was like, man, I need to find somebody that has some experience with this property. I found out about a guy that used to work here back in the day, and I called him on the phone, I told him who I was, and I was like, man, look, I'll buy you lunch, I'll pick you up, I'll bring you back, just come up here with me and show me what's going on. And um, I picked him up, older guy, man, he'd like walk with a hunchback, had a, like a pipe wrench that was probably four feet long. I get him in the car, we're just kind of making small talk. We get up here, we're walking around, and uh, the grass is like knee high. I mean, you can't really see what's going on. He's like digging around in the weeds. Um, he finds this old cast iron valve, and he puts that pipe wrench on the valve and, and turns it, and then water is just like shooting everywhere. And at that moment, I was like, okay, I see the vision now. I see what this place could be. Dude, this thing, I found, it was grown into the side of this apple tree that was here. Like, hanging up, and I was like, what is this? And then I figured, oh, dude, it's a key for the valves. It took us about a year just to get all the trash cleaned up and just sort of get the place sort of going in the right direction. Then the whole second year, was us working with the state in getting all of our licenses and certifications to process the trout. That was a big deal. I found this old book that was written in the 1930s about raising trout. And it was funny because I'm reading this book and everything the guy's talking about is making sense. He was raising fish how we're raising fish now almost a hundred years later. It's been a big learning curve. You know, I've probably killed more fish than I've raised, but that's part of it. You know, every day you're learning something new about the fish and the water. And it's really interesting that there's no pumps on the property. It's all gravity fed. People have said when they've eaten the trout, they felt like it tasted like clean water. You know, they first hear about farmed fish and it really kind of puts them off where, you know, if you come to our facility, you know, the, the trout are eating bugs. There's a thousand gallon a minute spring that is coming out of the rocks that's feeding all of our raceways and ponds. I mean, the water's 54 degrees year round. A lot of hatcheries use like a recycled water system, like they're inside, they're in big swimming pools, they're, you're, they're using the water. Um, that's called a closed system, like where they use the water and then they filter it and recycle it and then use it again. And that's what gives fish that like fish tank kind of taste. Trout have got to have clean water to live. You know, a lot of the hatcheries, you know, they may spend twenty or thirty thousand dollars a month on liquid oxygen, you know, pumping it into the water so they can have triple the amount of fish, and the fins are all rubbed off, and they're all beaten, banged up. But raising trout, and then raising trout that looks good, tastes good, smells good, is like two totally different things. It's one of those things like 
taste and see, you know, like once you taste our product, I mean, we've had the best chefs in the area just rave about our products. I think for like most of my life, or maybe not most, but a lot of it, I've just worked on different projects and different things that I didn't really feel like I saw like the fruits of my labor, you know, with this trout, you're feeding it every day, you're taking care of it, you're processing it. And at the end of the day, you have a product that people love to cook and eat. You know, it's very rewarding. I feel like you can provide a, a healthy, well-raised product for people. And for me, that's pretty rewarding. We've been received very well by the restaurants we've sold to, by individuals, farmers markets, distributors. We've really worked hard to have an amazing product. So our name is Smoking Chimneys and there's three words that go with that is farm, food, and prayer. There was this one moment I had, <clears throat> I was on Sunset Boulevard and I saw a dad and his kid riding bikes on the sidewalk and they're like weaving through trash and trying to not hit homeless people and not get hit by a car and I was like, you know, that's a Sunday afternoon like with your son. Like, that's just not where I want to be. And that was kind of like a light bulb moment from there. We got married and I moved to Oregon. We farmed there for about a year. And then we moved back to my um, grandparents' farm in Glade Hill. And that's where the name Smoking Chimneys came from. There was two stone chimneys there that were built in the 1800s that are still standing. And um, it was like we were putting life like back in the old chimneys. like getting the fire back going again. Farm, food, and prayer, we really believe and know that all those things are totally connected. You know, a lot of farms, it's just Joe Blow Farm or Triangle Farm, and that really like pigeonholes like the vision where I wanted to, I wanted something that was gonna give us space to really do what we want, you know? Um, we have farm there, so you know that we are a farm. You know, we are raising and producing animals and fish and all that kind of stuff. The food, the farm is like unto the food. Plus, just in our own family, we've really seen the benefits of regularly eating whole unprocessed food, you know, in our, our moods and you know, our kids' health, so we're firm believers in eating, you know, whole, clean food. And then the prayer portion is like, just like a part of, of who we are, you know, we, we believe there is a creator and there is a God, and you know, the connection between farming the land, eating the food, and having a relationship with God, like, it should all be one and the same and not broken up into all these segments, so that's what Smoking Chimneys is all about.